we are going to look at some setup details for accordance to be used with Greek assignments. And I have accordance up. I have no windows currently displayed. In order to bring up a window, I come over here to the very far left. If I hover over this button, it says New. I'll click on that. I'll come down and hover over Greek text, move my cursor over, and click on NA28 Greek NT. That will bring that up. When I say click, I mean by default left click. If I mean right click, I will say right click. If I just say click, I mean left click. So here we have the Nestle Elan 28 Greek New Testament. It's up at John chapter 5. Actually, yeah, John chapter 5. This is where I was before, and I'll show you how to set the settings so that you will come back to where you left off the previous time. So let's do that. Let's go over to Edit and come down, click on Preferences. That will bring up the Preferences window. Under General, the very top one, notice that I have under Startup, I have it set to Last Session. That's where you want to have it set. That way, when you come back up the next time, it will bring your accordance window up where you left off last time. That saves you a lot of time. You won't have to keep opening up windows that you had up previously. So set that to last session. Under Amplify, the next one down, for Greek, you're going to want to set the triple-click default to Thayer. So I've set that to Thayer. And for Greek, this is all you're going to need to worry about at the moment. If you come down to Text Display, you can set your search highlighting. I set it to teal. You can set it to red, however you want to. This will be the color that you will see your search results, the, the actual words that you see. For instance, over here, this is Latin, but this is an example. The word you're looking for will show up in a different color. You can set that to whatever you want to. Coming down to Unicode Display, I set my Greek font here under Original Language Fonts. I set my Greek font to SBL Greek. You have a lot of options. This is one good one. There's a few other ones that you could use. This is uh, a good one, SBL Greek. And then under Instant Details, you can set that uh, source, that color to something that, that will be recognizable. I usually set the font size to medium so I can see it. I click Show Popover on Click and Hold. That is, I set that setting to On. That will allow you to click on a word and have the instant details show up. And I put the delay at Short. That way, when I click on it, the instant details show up immediately. And then down here, I would click Everything. So all of these boxes, go ahead and click all of them, including English transliteration. You may not need that later, but right now it will be helpful. And then you want full words. And at that point, go ahead and click OK. And you should be ready to go now. I want to point out one last option that you may not have to worry about because it may already be set for you. But when you come over here to the New tab and click on that, notice that the resources are given to you in categories. So you have modern Bibles, Greek texts, Hebrew texts, dictionaries, commentaries. They're all organized by categories. If you click this button and what you see is all of these resources, like the GNT, the Hebrew Bible, all the dictionaries, if all of those are just jumbled together in one big alphabetical list, and they're not categorized, so you just see all the resources, regardless of their category, in one large alphabetical list, then if you want them in these nice categories, which I recommend, then you need to go to your Preferences, come over to Preferences, and come to Appearance, and down here near the bottom, there's a button that says Organize All Tools by Category. 
you want to click that button. Now I've already done it so I don't need to go through this again but you want to click that button. That will then organize all of the resources by category so that when you click the new button you will see these higher level categories and then you can go and say well, I want to go to commentary there's my three ca commentaries Matthew Henry New Bible Commentary NET Notes I don't need to search through a massive alphabetical list and try to find the M's and then find Matthew Henry so this is just a very convenient way to get your resources categorized as I said you may already have them categorized if this is the default that you already have then you don't need to do anything at this point at the top of your NA28 window, you have a white bar. I'm going to call that the search bar. Notice it says enter a word or phrase. This blue-gray oval here is set to verses. So that means I can type a verse in. Let's say I can type in Matthew, and I can either type in the entire word Matthew or abbreviation Matt, and then let's say 5 colon 4. Accordance wants you to put the colon between the verse or the chapter and the verse. And it brings me down to Matthew 5 4, right in the middle of a Sermon on the Mount. That's why you see this sort of more poetic structure here. Alternatively, I can come down here to the very bottom right and type my verse number in here. Let's say I want to go to John uh, 5 10. I can hit enter. And it brings me over here to John 5.10. So I can enter it in down here. And this is handy because the other option up here on the search bar in this blue-gray oval is words. When I select words as my option, this allows me to search for words. So now what I type in is going to show up as Greek. So if I type in... Uh, P-I-S-T-I-S, -I -I and it's the same letters for those particular Greek letters as they are for English. There are some that are different, but for P-I-S-T-I-S, -I -I you've got P-Iota, Sigma, Tau, Iota, Sigma. But notice that it's showing up in Greek because I've got a Greek text here. I have my option set to words. When I type in here, it shows up as Greek. So if I'm doing searches up here, then down here at the bottom right, this is how I am able to go from one verse to another, one chapter to another, one place in the New Testament to another. So if I wanted to go to Ephesians 4 colon 10, then I can do that by typing it in down in the bottom right hand side. And I can then use my search bar up here to search for words. Now I'm going to show you how to set ranges. You are going to want to set two ranges for the assignments that you're going to be doing. The assignments will be from 1st John mainly and in particular one passage in 1st John, 1st John 1 5 to 2 5. So we're going to set a couple of ranges. So I'm going to come up under search, click on search, come down, bring your cursor down, click on define range. Notice that a window comes up. I'm going to click the new button. I'm going to define a new range and I'm going to give it a name and so I'm just going to name this range. Let's say I'm going to call it first John. You can name it whatever you want to. You could name it with a one and the range that I want to define is going to be the book of 1st John and I'm going to type that as 1 space John. Now I'm going to come down here to verify. I'm going to verify it and that will just tell me if my range is valid or not. It is. And so I'm going to say then update. Okay, now I have 1st John as one of the ranges that I can use. Now I'm, I'm going to define one other range. So I'm going to click new again. And the name here will be 1st John 1, 5, 2, 2, 5. You can name that however you want to, uh, as long as you know what it is, of course. 
And then I'm going to come down and provide a range definition. And it's going to be now, I have to be more accurate here. It's going to be 1 space John 1 colon 5 dash 2 colon 5. So that's the more limited range that I want to define here. I'm going to verify that. So click on verify. Okay, it verified okay. If, if it wasn't okay, let's say I do um, Hezekiah 5, 2, 2, 10, 3. If I verify that, it tells me, of course, the book of Hezekiah cannot be found. All right, fair enough, since there is no book of Hezekiah. Okay, so 1 John 1, 5, dash, 1, colon 5, dash 2, colon 5. I verify that, and then I do an update. And now I'm ready to use any of the, the ranges that I want to use. So for example, I can click out of that. Now when I did, an, when I did the update, it actually set my range for me to be that range that I just created. If I want to set it to something else, I come up to, this needs to be set to be range. Now it could be several things, it needs to be range. It, it is range now, that's fine. This little oval here, just, been, just below and to the left of the search bar, and then right to the right of that, here's my range. It's the one that I just defined. If I want a different range, let's say I want 1st John. I click on that, now my range is 1st John. Now what this does is, when I do a search, I can set the range so that it will only find the words I'm looking for in that range. And that's very convenient. So in many cases, you're going to want to set your range to 1st John 1, 5 to 2, 5. Let me note that this bar here with your range and the actual limits of that range may not show up. I can, I can make it go away by coming up here to the very right-hand side of my search bar and clicking this minus sign. Notice that the range went away. And now if I want to get it back, I can click the plus to the right-hand side of the search bar. So now when I click the plus, Notice that range is all text. So I now I need to reset it. If I want it to 1st John 1, 5 to 2, 5, I'm going to reset it to that range. And now my range is set for my search. So that is how you define a range and then how you set that range to get prepared for a search. This concludes our purely setup matters. And future videos will give more details about particular kinds of searches.